it seems that negative reaction that we had to that German ban on naked short selling has continued through to today and it seems to be spooking investors really around the globe. Yes, I think we've, we're seeing lots of nervousness still in the market. Um, we've seen some improvement in the euro overnight, certainly. That was after we had news out yesterday. First, it was rumours, and it was confirmed this morning that the Swiss National Bank stepped into the tune of about 20 billion euros. It was reported to support the euro. So we certainly saw the euro recover from its those very, very low levels against the dollar, um, trading um, today quite a bit better. Um, there was also some, some rumours that maybe some of the Asian um, central banks might be selling some of those euro um, reserves that they've accumulated as a diversification measure away from the dollar um, reserves that they have. Um, so there is a little bit of support for the euro out there, um, but we believe that if the euro is not able to break uh, above the 125 level to the dollar, that um, there's still a lot more weakness to come and that it could go as low as 117. Um, so still not, not a happy picture in Europe today. Well, of course, that weakening euro is going to be good for uh, Europe's exports going forward, and they really are going to have to rely quite a lot on exports as they try to rebuild their economies, aren't they? Yes, certainly, although, you know, the weak euro alone is not going to help a lot because if you look at the measures that are being put in place and has to be put in place by many of the um, of the governments in Europe, um, the austerity plans, if you look at the measures that are required by the likes of Greece and, and even Spain and some of the other countries that are experiencing the excessive debt levels, a lot of it relates to, to very stringent cat, uh, tax cuts, cutbacks on government spending, etc. And we are very concerned the impact that that would have on, on overall um, growth in Europe. And unfortunately, I think the weakness in the euro will not be sufficient to, to take up the slack that that will be created in, in the euro um, region in terms of growth. And that is certainly one of the main reasons also why we're seeing the weakness in the euro is that, um, that the, the smart money is moving to other regions where they're trying to look for not only uh, less, um, less risk, but certainly higher growth and higher yield yielding assets at this stage. So the problems in the Euro region is not going to go away anytime soon. Um, and this is certainly a stage where I don't think anybody wants to be either a European politician or a European banker. Of course, it would be nice if some of that smart money ended up here in South Africa. But just looking at, at that Euro, uh, weak as it is at the moment, the economy is on that side. Not good news for South Africa for our export sector, is it? Yes, and I think that is one of the reasons why we're certainly also seeing the RAND trading at some of its lowest levels in, in recent times, because for all of the South African exporters that export to the European region, this is not good news, um, because not only is the RAND euro, of course, um, not looking all that rosy, but the problem is that in terms of a demand from the euro region, um, exactly because of the, the, um, the fiscal discipline that has to be exhibited there, we think that the demand from the European region will be very, very very tight for, for some time to come. Um, and, and if you look at the exporters to the European region, those are exactly the sort of manufacturers and exporters that are taking strain in our economy. Well, perhaps let's look at demand for beer for a minute. Um, SAB Miller out with results this morning, 17% growth in earnings. The market reacting quite unfavorably to those results. The share price down over 5% at one point. Yes, yes. Unfortunately, not a great set of results. Um, certainly not um, not great relative to what the market expected. So at headline level, maybe it looks good, but uh, the market was expecting something better from, from beer and from SAB. Of course, it is a defensive stock. So um, certainly since the, the middle of April, about a month ago, we've seen some excellent performance out of SAB Miller relative to the rest of the market. Um, so the 5% down today could be seen as some profit taking from those very, very high levels. But the market really punishing them this uh, this morning for uh, a relatively poor set of results. But 85% of their earnings or their profits come from um, emerging market regions. They're still very positive about emerging markets and say that they see good volume growth still coming from there. And of course they're expecting a very, very nice volume tick up during the Soccer World Cup due to start in, in the next three weeks here in South Africa. Um, they're expecting as much as 4-6% to 6 volume growth during the Soccer World Cup. Um, so that would certainly be good for, for SAB Miller um, and, and certainly with all the uncertainty in Europe that we are talking about, um, beer and, um, and, and SAB Miller in particular remains a very dis defensive play um, and we believe that uh, this might just be a good opportunity for, for more defensive investors to, to actually just get back into the stock again.
Well, on the reverse side, we had a very positive reaction by the market to Investex results. Um, a little bit of profit growth, but it really looks like the worst is over for banks, and particularly banks like Investec. I wouldn't say that the risks are necessarily over, but Investec did come out with a very, very good set of numbers. It was in line with the guidance that they gave a couple of weeks ago, um, and the market really pleased with that set of numbers. Some very, very good signs out of that, certainly in terms of their asset management business and in terms of their capital markets business, some really great and, and positive numbers coming out of there. Still quite a bit of problems in their, in their private equity business. The impairment's still very high there, but overall a great set of numbers and and certainly when we look at the at the increase in, for example, the dividends, this is not something that we've seen from, from a lot of the companies in this space. And the market very pleased. It's one of the few large companies that's actually in positive territory today on our bourse. So the market really very pleased with Investex results today. Of course, that, that dividend up by 23%. The dividend cover dropped from 3.3 times to 2.8 times um, earnings. And, and really... It must be a sign that they're confident about going into, into the next year and that the balance sheet's looking pretty healthy. Yes, yes, it is. Those are all very positive um, um, aspects. Certainly it was boosted by trading activity. And I think just one, one word of caution maybe is that they have created quite a demanding base for themselves going into the next trading period um, and that it might be a little bit tough to, to repeat these sort of numbers. But overall, we're very, very happy with the, with the picture that they've painted and their outlook for the future. And Investec certainly looking very, very good. Well, another one of the large stocks that is doing quite well today, also one of those dual listed stocks, Richemont, uh, a short while ago was up by 1%. Any, any, anything that might be driving that share price up? Yes, there's a story out of um, uh, the Financial Times in Germany this morning that is rumouring that they might be looking to buy um, an eyewear and lens maker in, in Germany. Um, and it's quite an interesting story because if you look at the, at the company, it's called a, a company called Rodenstock. And they specialise in the, in the manufacturing of lenses and eyewear in particular. And they do have a couple of, of brand names that they manufacture under licence, the like of Porsche and Daniel and Mercedes and so on. So at first glance might, one might think that this could be a good fit for Richemont but um, when you actually look at the detail of it you realize that they're much more focused on the manufacturing side of things and from that point of view we're not quite sure that we see this as necessarily a good a good uh, deal or fit for Richemont rather this might make more sense for the likes of Raynet and uh, we would be looking at uh, the results announcement of both these companies with a lot of um, interest over the next two weeks um, Raynet you might recall was created out of the unbundling of the Richemont Group um, about 18 months ago. And Raynet, in that 18-month period, Raynet only really exists of a very large um, uh, Euro cash portion and the stake that it still has in, in British American tobacco. And, and really the only um, um, acquisition that it's made since then is it's acquired um, a part of the Lehman's Brothers private equity business. Um, and it's probably high time that they actually make another acquisition. So we think uh, probably a better fit for Raynet rather than Richmond, um, and it would be interesting to see what they come out with. Um, also, with all the uncertainty going, it's interesting to sort of contrast the more defensive plays in the likes of the beer makers like SAB and uh, BATS, the British American Tobacco, to the more luxury good players like Richmond. So an interesting play on our European um, cyclical stocks or our, our consumer goods stocks over the next couple of weeks. So what would you be going for, defensives or cyclicals at this stage? it would most definitely be defensive and, and, and definitely a time to go for the yield and for the defensive nature in stocks.